What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and I had some material prepped today to discuss CPU requirements for mining in the future as it pertains to proof of useful work involving a newer coin called Dynex. But uh, in light of the current news events and current events going on with the Silicon Valley Bank, I decided to shift that in case you were interested. And of course, in a poll here, 68.5% of you today would like me to talk about USDC instead of DNX. So that's what we're gonna do right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. I recently launched a crypto mining e-course at sonofatech.com and it includes nine steps to cover when you decide to start your crypto mining journey. This is specifically pertaining to 2023 crypto mining profits and taking advantage of the down market to achieve skyrocketing growth as we move into the next halving of Bitcoin. You'll learn buying mining equipment in a bear market, using outside investment to speculative mine, begin mining once profit is established, sell mine crypto to pay for electricity, Hold and prep for the bull run, sell at the top of the bull market, sell mining equipment at the top of the bull market, and begin investing in land and power so that you can bring in outside investors to utilize excess resources. Thanks everybody for your support, and I hope you enjoy the course. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. Welcome back. So most of you are probably stopping in because you see this happening. We have a de-pegging of USDC coin from the US dollar. It's all the way down to 93 cents at the time of recording. And really it could be a lot worse, except for the fact that withdrawals have been paused on some of the large exchanges. The reason for this is actually because of a collapse of traditional finance with the Silicon Valley bank shut down by California regulators. This happened on March 10th, Friday, right before the weekend began. And so people are going to have to fester on this and make all of their, their crazy ideas and conspiracy theories surrounding it and what's going to actually happen on Monday when the banks go to reopen. And so that is affecting, obviously, the entire market. And cryptocurrency is one of those things that doesn't sleep. Whereas like your traditional finance markets, they're going to sleep over the weekend. Cryptocurrency doesn't do that. So we start to see kind of how markets are going to react as far as cryptocurrency right away. This one is a unique case though, in the fact that it is tied to the US dollar. And unfortunately, the reason why this is happening as announced by Circle is that $3.3 billion of the $40 billion of USDC reserves remain at SVB. So there's no way to actually pull this out. As far as federal insurance goes, my understanding is that you can be insured up to $250,000, but in the amount of $3.3 billion, obviously $250,000 is a drop in the bucket. And so there is this pending concern surrounding USDC and whether or not they're going to be able to get this 3.3 billion out. Luckily, you know, this is only around 10%. I say only around, but only around 10% of the total reserves for USDC. So it's not quite as bad as you may expect. In fact, right now, if we look once again at the current price of USDC, you could almost say that this is this potential loss is already priced in. And because of the way the markets will function, it should repeg. At least that would be the expectation. Curiously, what we saw was a vote of confidence from Vitalik Buterin as he has gone ahead and migrated some of his holdings over to the USDC, meaning that it appears that he has faith that USDC will recover. That's not financial advice. That's just an observation of what one individual within the crypto space is doing. But of course, that individual also converted his commodity of Ethereum into a security by moving it to proof of stake. So take that with you what with that what you will and let me know what you think in the comment section below should you follow vitalik strategy here and take that 8% gain possibility or uh, you know not risking of course if you did that the fact that it could go to zero which i highly doubt because at this point we're talking about 3.3 billion dollars out of the 40 billion dollars of reserves now we talked about the pausing of the actual 
transacting between USDC and USD conversions. And on Coinbase here, they did announce last night uh, that at 9.41 p.m. Central Time on March 10th, that we are temporarily pausing USDC to USD conversions over the weekend while banks are closed. During periods of heightened activity, conversions rely on USD transfers from banks that clear during normal business hours. When banks open up on Monday, we plan to recommence conversions. They go on to say that your assets remain safe. However, of course, it is important to note that some banks are not probably going to reopen on, on Monday. Now, the, the case for the Silicon Valley bank shutdown is that there will be a digital version of SVB, SVB that will open up on Monday, but there's no actual assets backing that. There's a bank run that was going on yesterday at these locations in California. And this is going to have a rippling effect not only across the crypto community, like we're already starting to see, but also rolling over into the entire tech sector. So here's really where we will begin to see whether or not Bitcoin remains within that 18 to $23,000 range, which is where we are talking about cost to mint to Bitcoin or if it decides to follow the rest of the markets. Of course, the rest of the markets have that additional about 10% leniency from where Bitcoin sits right now at $20,000 and where it could go based on the price of minting a Bitcoin, which is like $18,000. So it's yet to be seen. Here's the important part that I think people are probably clicking on this video to find out. What are my opinions on this? Does this you know, affect my perception of cryptocurrency in a positive or negative light. And here's how I see it. It's inevitable. And what do I mean by that? If I take a look at the reading that I've been doing over the past year, we are looking at books like Soft War, which I'll leave a link down below by James Lowry. And of course, prior to that, The Sovereign Individual, both books that I think as participants within cryptocurrency, you should be paying attention to. But in the first one, to approach this from the sovereign individual perspective, what we are experiencing now is a digital transformation in finance. And whether or not you decide that you agree with it or disagree with it, you're going to be dragged kicking and screaming into the future, which is either going to be one of two things, a decentralized form of finance in the form of things like Bitcoin, where we are utilizing proof of work consensus mechanisms, or we'll move into either one of two directions, centralized cryptocurrencies on proof of stake networks that are basically run and governed by corporations based on where their node infrastructure is hosted, i.e. AWS, Google, and Azure with Microsoft, or we will have the worst case scenario where everybody is governed by a nation state backed central bank digital currency like the digital yuan that we're seeing in China. And of course the proposals in the UK, Japan, and the United States. And I think you'll start to see a huge battle between all of these things. Traditional finance is going to fight in general cryptocurrency and, and try to push the decentralized forms off. But we start to see extremely interesting interactions between countries and cryptocurrencies. And depending on what side people are on, whether they're being persecuted by SWIFT and sanctions and so on or not, depending on which nation we were discussing, whether that be Russia or the United States, for example, you might see a different adoption of different technologies. The reason why I bring that up is moving on to Jason Lowry and his book, of course, Software and how Bitcoin will be utilized to basically de-reserve or, or dethrone the U.S. dollar as the, as the international reserve and that potential for that and the need for Bitcoin to be adopted by free loving, freedom-loving countries. Here is his tweet here recently that I thought is very relevant in this. He says, not buying Bitcoin as a U.S. national strategic security hazard. It is one. So here's step one in his thoughts. Convince the American public to steer as much of their internal capital away from Bitcoin as possible. 
Convince them there are other protocols that are better. Create a huge misinformation campaign to discredit proof of work. What are we seeing most recently in the federal government's moves as it regards to proof of work mining the 30% tax proposal by Biden, the Biden administration this week, this past week. And it's based on the grounds that cryptocurrency is bad for the environment, but plugging a Bitcoin miner is no different than plugging in your Tesla into the wall and showing discrimination towards individual individual industries has nothing to do with the environment, especially as it pertains to Bitcoin mining in general. It is the largest industry to adopt uh, renewable energy at the highest percentage rate, meaning it utilizes percentage wise more renewables than any other industry in existence and has enabled power companies to move into more renewables because of the additional revenue it provides. And so if we actually look at what is being said versus what reality is, they are juxtaposed. And it's important to keep that in note. That would be in my opinion, classification as a misinformation campaign. Convince them that proof of work is bad for the environment, target prominent American Bitcoiners with spam bots and make American Bitcoiners look like trolls. Step two, bait the US into shooting themselves in the foot by giving the entire world a reason to get off the USD standard. Like a massive spree of money printing and inflation and of course, potential collapses of the largest one of the largest banks in the United States, especially as it pertains to the tech sector, then you got you got that whole extra point here. This was actually a tweet before. This was on March 9th when he tweeted this, and then directly after that on March 10th is when we see the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank. So it says, or denying sovereign nations off SWIFT, so due to a Russian invasion, or... You know, of course, they say the Chinese lab leaked coronavirus for the money printing and inflation. So we kind of have these attacks that are going on over and over, and it is devaluing the U.S. dollar. And, of course, uh, uh, removing trust in the U.S. dollar. And if you have entire sovereign nations being forced out via SWIFT, then you have basically an incentive there for them to adopt other options and avenues for transacting. Step three, while the U.S. doesn't know what's happening, do a rapid 180 flip on Bitcoin, build a gigantic hashing infrastructure in Siberia, and rapidly become a global leader in proof-of-work tech. Now, I think this is where we started to see, of course, China kind of go back on their initial ban of proof of work mining and starting to allow investment once again within Bitcoin, probably because of influence from Russia is what I would assume, or BRICS in general, BRICS standing for, of course, Brazil, Russia, India, China, Saudi Arabia, and the S is, uh, yeah, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Those are the ones that are talking about a, a, an external reserve currency or secondary reserve currency to compete with the U.S. dollar right now. And if we start to see the adoption of Bitcoin, that could be extremely interesting. Now, number four, reprice exports in Bitcoin. Convince other nations to do the same. This happens and the U.S. has pretty much stifled its innovation within the blockchain space, then you are at a disadvantage as a nation, right? And then he says, step five, enjoy the show. Of course, this all comes from the software book and it is becoming extremely relevant right now. So I definitely recommend checking it out in the description below. My thoughts on this entire matter is I don't really care about stable coins because I've never held any stable coins. The most that I've done with stable coins is utilize them to either reduce my fees when transacting or to temporarily hold a little bit of US dollar in preparation for exchanging it to pay for power or utilities for my mining operation. That's the only real reasons that I've used stable coins. Once again, I'm not against stable coins. And when operated in the proper form and fashion, of course, the peg remaining uh, one to one, all of that were good. But if you have a collapse of the bank, a bank where that those reserves are being held, it's it's not really a failure of the stable coin itself, but a failure of the traditional financial systems. And that's really where I think we we need to point that out and highlight that this is a failure 
of the Silicon Valley Bank. This isn't a failure of stable coins, which is extremely important. But once again, you shouldn't be holding any of these stable coins because you defeat the purpose of cryptocurrency in general. At the end of the day, one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin and nobody's going to care about the US dollar except for its value in relation to Bitcoin in 50 years from now. That's my thoughts on it as a whole. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like, comment, subscribe down below and I'll see you next Tuesday.